Hi everyone, thanks for joining us again at In The Know. We're catching up with some of your favorite celebs, reality TV stars, and more direct from their homes. I'm your host, Gibson Johns, and today we're joined by Margaret Josephs from Bravo's The Real Housewives of New Jersey. We chatted about how she's been spending her time while quarantined, including continuing her podcast, Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget, and raising awareness for ways that people can be giving back right now. She told me about production shutting down on the next season of Jersey, shared her feelings on Danielle Staub, quote, retiring from the franchise, and opened up about where she stands with Teresa Judice after they seemingly made up at the reunion. Keep listening for my full interview with Margaret. Hi, Margaret Josephs. Thanks so much for calling in. Hi, Gibson. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? How, you know, we're all quarantined right now. How are you holding up? Who's at your house? How's it, you know, how, how are you holding up? I'm actually holding up pretty well, considering I'm home with Joe, who's doing a lot of work in the house, thank God. Uh, my mother comes during the day to visit because she lives right down the street. And Lexi, who, you know, she's like my sister, so I get to see her. And, you know, I have some kids some kids home, you know, people really don't know about, but they're, right. they're, they're all the way upstairs. <laughs> I got so a ha- full house. I mean, I, you, that's that's kind of the best way to be right now. How are you guys spending your time? Well, I have my own podcast, which we, Lexi and I have been recording sessions. Yes. For Green's Tuna Fish Budget. So Lexi and I have been working on that. And of course, I've been, you know, so that's exciting, getting guests on that and talking and doing content. So really focusing on that, uh, checking in with everybody I know and love, checking in with the girls, obviously, um, calling a right binge watching Tiger Kings, because that's the new obsession. We're all doing it. Yes, everybody's doing it, catching up on things and, you know, cooking and and trying to and doing a lot of charity things, you know, reposting things like that, trying to get people to donate, anybody who can donate, anybody who is suffering, trying to help them, you know, actually really busy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I, I think I think that's sort of I think everyone is kind of trying to just stay occupied. And I, I have seen that you have posted on Instagram some things to help give back or donate or or kind of support medical workers. Can you talk to me about that and sort of what you're kind of speaking out about? Yes. Um, you know, everybody who does watch I knew I was involved with Brave Gowns, which was hospital gowns for children. Mm-hmm. Well, that factory has changed over to making masks, antimicrobial masks that, you know, obviously they're not the N95, but these are approved um, by hospitals just to, just to help out so we can get more N95 masks. So we cha- they've changed over the entire factory. So they're all done on donation. You know, just so, you know, no profits are being made. No, no one's making money. on. It's just that they could pay the seamstresses to get them to hospitals. So I've been working on people getting to donate to that. I did all my cameos to to donate to that charity to get that out to the hospitals. That's so nice. Oh, thanks. But these healthcare workers, I mean, seriously, it is so upsetting you know, they're working so hard. It's so sad. Lexi's husband works in a hospital Wow! in the emergency room. He's seeing it firsthand in Queens at Columbia Presbyterian, um, the outpost there. And it's really scary and people yeah. are dying and that's young people. It's, it's so serious. And I think that, you know, we're all trying to do what we can be doing. And so I think everyone who follows you is just super appreciative of what you have been able to do and, and support. And I think we're, everyone's just trying to do their part. And that's kind of the best we can ask for right now. Yes, followers. Everybody's so sweet, so nice, so supportive, so giving. I'm, I'm really blessed. And I know that the, mo- the upcoming season had started filming and then production stopped that's been confirmed what can you tell me about what that kind of first couple weeks were like uh and kind of what's the mentality for you right now it was quick uh you know i just i had a feeling it was we didn't know it was going to happen we were excited all to be back to you know start back together and you know and, and get back into it that's when we always start and we were looking forward to doing exciting things and be together and then you know, we, we just stopped. It was dead. It was just like the world had shut down, but obviously understandably so we had, you know, first we're like, Oh, we're shutting down for a week. We're shutting down. Now we're shut down to God knows when, but it's also the same thing. I have a business. I bring in things right. from China. We ship, you know, just like your family has a business. Everybody mm-hmm. knows what goes on. Um, and home goods was closed. It was everybody stopped all their shipments. It's just like, like, it's like shut down. 
It's just shut down. Everything's shut down. Everything's just shut down. So yeah. obviously, you know, what are we going to do? So we're st- trying to always trying to stay engaged with the fans, motivate people, trying to keep people's spirits up, do charitable things, and and we're doing the best we can. Mm-hmm. Before we get too far into it, before earlier today, I tweeted out and I asked some people, "What's the what's Margaret Joseph's most iconic line or moment from from her three seasons on Real Housewives of New Jersey?" And I'm curious if you can guess what some of those are. Your husband's in the pool. Your husband's, the pool. Your husband's in the pool. Your lips look like a monkey's asshole. Um, what else? Your husband's in the pool is number one, obviously. But there is one that I kind of had forgotten about from the last reunion where you say, you can change your face, you can change your name, but you can't change your soul. You'll still be the same old Beverly inside. I like that? Okay, yeah. People love that. That was a very popular response. I mean, it's true. You can't change that. You can't change that. No. So how do you feel kind of, I mean, so the most recent season of Jersey wrapped up right before kind of a lot of this ramped up, but right before a lot of the stay at home precautions started in the U S um, how, how do you feel to have that season wrapped up? Well, I feel there was a lot of resolution and I said, we got rid of one virus <laughs> off of that stage. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the good news. No, I feel like we did have a lot of resolution. I mean, obviously, um, you know, Jennifer came in hot that reunion. Very hot. Very hot. So, I'm sure, you know, I think there's going to have to be some things to resolve there with some of the, some of the ladies. But um, with all being said, I think Teresa and I, obviously, we are close. There was a lot of things that went astray, but... You know, we went away together the very next day and did an appearance together after the reunion. Wow. We saw each other in the airport. I started crying. We were holding hands. We were very cuddly. That was very hard, I think, for both of us to go through. I know the way Teresa thinks. I think she had felt sorry for Danielle and all of those things. And you want the truth? I don't like to take money out of anybody's mouth either. I just couldn't be around that. And I'm very much about authenticity and I think I stay true to the way I feel all along. I don't make up stories. I don't do things just to for camera and things like that. And I think Teresa truly felt sorry for her. And I think, you know, she realized what was going on and, and we're all good. Um, we talked at the beginning of last season about, you know, we talked on the phone before the season started and we talked about how this was going to be one of the best seasons I think yet or in, in recent memory for Jersey. Do you think, that the fans reacted the way you thought they were going to react to this season? I do. I do. I think the fans really loved it. I mean, unfortunately, I had that horrible ponytail pull, which um, was is going down as an iconic moment. It's it's upsetting. I think some fans are like, you deserved it. You deserved it. I thought that was um, a little bizarre to me, to the fact is, I'm not saying, yes, I did throw water. It, it was one of those things, but to, you know, some people came out like that. I was like, Oh God, you know, it was, but, that- but here's the, here's the thing, throwing a drink. First of all, you didn't even, you, you dumped some water. It wasn't a yeah. wine glass. That, and yeah. that is commonplace regardless on housewives these days. Yeah, but to happened. react physically to that, it's just, it's just not even equatable. You know, it's different people, levels. People were trying to equate me pushing Marty in the pool to that. You tried to hurt an old man. I was like, are you kidding me? It's it's something that goes on at people's high school parties, little kid parties, pushing people in pools. I mean, it's it's a fun thing. I still push people in a pool. I mean, right. I, just, I, I but people were trying to equate that. It was just insanity. But what, that, but it happens, you know. Yeah. What's the balance for you? Sort of. You said that people respond and they're like, "This is an iconic moment. You're part of it." But on your side, it was serious. You had with the last. <laughs> I, I, what, what sort of the mental balance there? Cause, cause you know, you're giving us what people want, which is a, a kind of great dramatic moment, but then it also hurts for you. It did. It was very hard to relive it and rewatch it and see it all because it was super, super emotional. Um, you know, that was also cut down to a, a smaller scene of it. It did play out longer. And then, you know, I knew all along was going to come out that it was premeditated and mm. everything was premeditated because I had already, you know, from the whole city. So everyone, so that was what was upsetting. But listen, I was fine at the end of it. Thank God she didn't, you know, crack my neck or break my spine, whatever it is. And and I knew that I was going to ever have to see her again and it was over. So I could, I could just deal with it. I could move on from things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and 
we gave everybody what they needed. I could laugh. I laughter is the best medicine. So now I can laugh. Sure. Oh, no, it was an unbelievable weave. It was, you know, I could laugh at all that shit. For sure. It held up. The weave did yeah. hold up. Yeah. It, the weave, I mean, that weave held up. It was great. It, you know, so I could, I could always say those things. I mean, I wasn't happy about it, but it was, it was good. And I'm going to guess that you're you're pretty happy to be leaving Danielle in the rear view. She announced on Watch What Happens Live that she was retiring from Housewives. She yeah, had a right, friend right. on the reunion. I'm not exactly sure from what job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, is that is that accurate though? Are you are you are you glad to have Danielle just in the rear view at this point? She's not going to be part of the show going yeah. forward. You know, there's, it was too dark. It, it, I think it got a little dark and, um, yeah, I think there could be a drama, you know, women drama and things like that, but it just went down the wrong pike. There could be, you know, Jennifer and I could argue all day long. It never gets that dark. And if it, it just, there's, there's a level that goes with, um, someone who is like her, which, you know, I don't want to say anything really horrible about her because I do think she's suffering. Right. right? It's got too dark. Right. And like you said, on the reunion, you you said that exact thing. You said you and Jennifer could argue all day, but at the end of the day, Jennifer does still come from a good place. A lot of, yeah, a lot of the time, yeah. she has a good heart. Of course. Of course. And you can get over that. Yeah, so. and, and I could get over that. I just can't, I could never be, you know, that was my whole thing with Danielle Long. I could just never be part of someone's life like that. And listen, that, you know, that she was, even, that Marty, just that whole thing was not for me. And right. I really wanted to separate myself, but she was still coming around. She was friends with some people and slowly everybody tried to separate themselves. Right. So you, Melissa and Jackie give me a lot of joy as this threesome on the show that you're, you're it just reels like you guys have this really genuine connection as a group of three friends. You know, you're part of a larger group, obviously, but you three particularly get along really well, see to eye to eye, a lot of things. Yes. And I feel like, you know, Everyone on the show gets criticism for different things. What do you think about the criticism that Jackie can take herself too seriously, or because I think that's something that she gets that she gets a lot from fans yeah, or from other people on the show? And she doesn't, to be honest, she doesn't take it too seriously. She's actually very funny, and I think people don't like she gives it back. She doesn't take it too seriously. She could give it back. She could take it and give it back. And I think what was said to her, she they, it was cut to the core. It went to a different level, like. Did I throw Jennifer under the bus a little bit? Yeah. Did I take it as serious? No. But Jennifer could have nearly said, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean that. But she right. dug, in, dug in like nobody's business. It didn't have to get to that level. So, of course, she took it seriously. And, I mean, she still did. You know, I find it a little odd that she still puts it on social media, showing parties and talking about parties. I'm right. like, wait a minute. Yeah, know? I and at the end of the day, like, you know, I loved that Jackie's parties are just, they're not, they're not, they're not over the top. They're just what, the, they're what the little, little boys just want little party favors. They want pizza and they want to play basketball. Like that yeah. is what their kids want. That's what she's giving them. And that's the whole thing. It's just like, it was too much, it was too much digging in. So I didn't think yeah. Jackie would do it seriously at all. Totally. And then, and then on the other side, I think the criticism that Melissa gets is that she's like, too self-involved or that's what sort of that was part of the reunion what do you think of that i felt like calling her self-absorbed coming it's like yes does melissa do the selfies i tease her all the time that does not mean she's self-absorbed she's the best mother she's obsessed with her kids she's always going to the games she's an amazing amazing parent so i thought that was a a very low blow yeah and at the end of the day being a real housewife part of the gig is Marketing, marketing yourself. Yeah, promote, promote yourself. And you are the personality. And at, at the end of the day, she's good at that. Yes, she's very good at that. And, and I would not call her, you know, self-absorbed. Was, and I, to say you're, to, okay, you could say you're into yourself, but to say you're too self-absorbed to have another child, that was like very, very insulting. Mm -hmm. I think another common refrain on Housewives this season and in past seasons has been this narrative of people thinking that others cower in, in Teresa's presence and, and kind of don't challenge her on things. What do you think of that, that point of view? Because I think that comes up a lot as well. I know. I think a lot of people do say that. I don't think it's always true. I think Jackie challenged her. I think I was like, are you kidding me? Do I think um, Teresa's been through a lot? So I think sometimes we give her a pass to the fact is we're all empathetic. 
Because she has, Got it. if anybody's had it rough, she has had it very rough. And she's had a lot of, she's taken a lot of hits. I don't think it's, you know, that's a very easy thing for people to say, oh, they're kissing Teresa, so this or that. We're human. And we live it every day with her. So, of course, we're going to turn, you know, our head to certain things because she has been through uh, a lot. Right. That makes sense. There's sort of a balance there. And I think, I yeah. think you guys strike a very good balance with it. Uh, yeah. yes. But I, you know. I, mean, it, I, I Listen, did I forgive her? Of course. Am I, I'm not a grudge holder. If someone has a good heart and good intentions, I'm willing to forgive. I mean, if you keep doing crazy shit to me, of course not. But if you're truly sorry for that. I, I love you. And I, you know, we, I understand where people come from. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's also probably why J- somebody like Jackie has had a hard time with some of the critics on social media is because she came in and was not afraid of Teresa. She called Teresa out in her first couple episodes. And I think that Teresa has very protective fans who didn't like that. And I, that's something that I've kind of observed as well. Um, and I, I like that you, you and Jackie have, you know, you you've you've called Teresa out when when she needs to be called out, and I think everybody should be held accountable. Right? Do I feel like do I am I sometimes softer with Teresa? Yes. If she's going through something, do I understand that? But I think everybody, nothing's an excuse. Right. So you know we we're not sure when we're going to go back into production on on Housewives. It's going to happen eventually. What do you? You're, you're three seasons in. You're going to go on your fourth season, which is crazy at this point. Yeah, I remember, yeah. I feel like we just we got together. I, re- I remember when I first talked to you before your first season on the yes. phone, and it just feels like time, is, time has flown by. But what do you hope that Jersey Housewives looks like? Because, I, you know, we are kind of closing a chapter on a lot of the Teresa and Joe stuff. I yeah. think, you know, there, it's not done, but there's, there is some resolve there. What do you hope the show looks like in the coming seasons um, as we I continue? Hope, I hope we see um, Teresa living her best life. I hope we get to see her, you know, that I want to see. I want to see her date somebody. I want to see good things. You know, I'm always there. Do this, you know, go here, go there. Da, da, da. I want, we need a doctor. We need a lawyer. She said she wants to find a Jewish guy. I think I would love to see something like that. Um, you know, I think growth for everybody, some change, you know, some changing things. Listen, Jennifer wants to like do something in business. I think everybody has to, I want Jackie to do uh, more speaking engagements, more published things. I think everybody growing in their personal way. Melissa's become a real businesswoman. She branched out to menswear. I would love her to get into some licensing. I would love to, Dolores to do uh, some type of business. Like she said, all her kids are up and out. She does so many things with animals, so many things with charities. I know she do something. Um, listen, she, like she said, with David, she was happy. Now, you know, I think everybody has a lot of personal growth. I mean, I'm always doing something with business and, you know, I'm doing the podcast, the caviar dreams, chin and fish budget. I always want to do something with entrepreneurs. So I think everybody, you know, is getting older and it's, everybody's moving to different phases of their life. Everybody's kids are getting better. Like you said, I it's been fun to watch everyone branch out, and I I look forward to seeing more of that. I look forward to seeing the the group dynamics continue to evolve because, as we saw last season, it's completely unpredictable. It is. I mean, but friendships shift and change, and things like that. I mean, Dolores and I happen to be extremely close. I, I we talk every morning, which I is love funny. it. And you know, and I and I hope people get to see more of us together as mm-hmm. well. So talk to me a little bit about the podcast, because I know that's how you've been spent. You just said you've been spending some of your time doing that. Uh, talk to me about, you know, the concept, the concept behind it. And because it really celebrates the, your, your business and because you, you've, you've been so successful in business. And I think, okay. you know, you've been able to show, you've been able to show off that on the show, but this is really placing a spotlight on that. Yes. Well, I started it because um, I wanted to do it for a while called Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget. People who start from nothing or just an idea or people who are, disruptors in an industry or and it's really celebrates the entrepreneurship of people and people who want to reinvent themselves so uh toast network you know which is claudia and jackie o it offered us they're like why don't you guys do a podcast on our network i was like i'm so doing it with them because they are so plugged into the millennial right and, and they're smart and they've been look i mean look at their success uber they're, successful yeah over the morning just so I was like, I'll absolutely do it with them. And because there's also so many podcasts about pop culture and things like that. No one needs to hear from the march. I don't need to be covering that. <laughs> I could be showing, you know, showing people a different side. Totally. 
And I did it with Lexi, who has worked for me, you know, and been a real partner to me forever. So we really, we have on great guests, uh, which is fabulous. I've also had on the former producer of our show, Dorothy Turan. I'll, ha- I'll have Melissa on because she has business. I want to have your parents on. Scout yes. business, which I know them forever. They're such, you know, such a leader in the, the, the gift industry, the bags and things like that. So we're having all different people. I want to have Gary Janetti on. I, you know, I'm so it's all different kinds of people that started with nothing, just an idea, which is so great. I love that this is, it's a variety of people that you, that yeah. you can have on because it is a general business entrepreneurship podcast and it, it opens up the, the gates for you to bring on a lot of different people, which is awesome. And it's not, it's not, you know, it's, it's not serious. Right. We're talking about the Marge here. She brings humor to everything she does. I want the nitty gritty, the down and dirty and let people know what business is really like. Everything is not that easy. Everybody sees this on Instagram and, and everybody looks so fancy and, and fabulous. But, you, you know, it's at the end of the day, that's all, it's all bullshit, you know? We're at the end of the day, you guys are real. You're the Every, real housewives and, yeah, and let's, yeah, let's see the realness. Yeah. People who have businesses, you are successful, but everybody's had a pitfall. Everybody starts somewhere. Everybody's failed before. And, and people should know that because I think people think there's overnight successes. And there's not. It takes, you know, there's no overnight success. Yeah. Well, Margaret, I'm so happy to be able to check in with you thank you for calling in oh, thank you for checking in. I, I hope that the housewives can get back into production soon and we're all kind of can carry yeah. on with our lives um stay safe and healthy love to your parents and i'll be in touch love to you love to the whole fam and thank you so much thanks gibson thanks so much bye for more stories from in the know go to in the know.com you can also follow in the know on twitter instagram and facebook And find me, Gibson Johns, on Instagram and Twitter at Gibsonoma. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.